Hello everyone, I'm Julie and in today's interior design video we are talking about all the ways that you can love your home even more this year. The right design and decorating decisions can go a long way to make your home feel like a place of joy and pure bliss. Surrounding yourself with your favorite furniture and finishes, colors and textures that make you happy, or even remind you of loved ones are all incredible ways to start feeling more joyful in the home right now. Watch this video to get my top designer tips on creating a space that you are absolutely obsessed with, whether or not you own or rent your home. Home is the ultimate sanctuary for me. As a Cancer, I am a total nester. It's a very deliberate practice for me to design a space that my family and I can enjoy and love for years to come. Most of our time is spent in our homes from relaxing and sleeping to eating and entertaining. And now with the rise of remote and hybrid work conditions, we might even be working from home more so than in the past. So of course, it's no surprise that our homes have incredible power to shape us and influence our mood. Take a good look around you. What do you see? Just as a cluttered home can invite more chaos into our lives, a clean, organized, and thoughtfully curated home can bring us so much more joy into our lives and a sense of peace and calm. My team and I have rounded up the top five easiest ways to bring more joy into our home. Starting with my first designer tip, it is to go bold. What I've noticed in my own home and my clients' homes is that I seem to gravitate towards the rooms with the boldest designs. You guys know that I am a maximalist. I mean, look at this chic silk caftan I just scored. I mean, I couldn't wait to get this on. And it's like those moments, these little pockets of joy that you can capture right now just from like a favorite shirt or a blouse or decorating with a favorite color or pattern that you absolutely love. In my dining room, it is predominantly very neutral. I love my Rove Concepts dining table. I have like this taupe colored dining chairs with a walnut frame. It's just really pretty. It's a very refined, but at the centerpiece of it all, I have this vintage tapestry sofa that's flanking the wall of the dining room. Aside from the black and white contrast print, my eyes kind of immediately go to this focal point in the entire space. It's because I just love the bold of the pattern. Set against really neutral colors, very smooth finishes. I love how the contrast of the texture of the color and the pattern kind of vibrates in the room and just really sets it off. To me, that is a bold move that you can make in a neutral space. It's all about just bringing in strategic color or pattern or just some contrast. In my client's home, Casa Hacienda, we have custom designed this home from the ground up. We have a lot of color in the space, a lot of pattern. The clients travel all over the world and I love that they love to hunt and collect like I do. They've brought back really beautiful Persian rugs, really beautiful Moroccan lights, and a lot of home decor and souvenir trinkets that I was able to sprinkle around the entire house to tell the story of their space. The all gray kitchen is glamorous, but just very neutral. We have an open concept great room that is adjacent to the kitchen. It echoes a lot of those cooler tones, a lot of the grays, the blues, the navies. And then I popped in some contrasting color with red and ivory tones. As you move from room to room, we have like a really romantic kind of feminine sanctuary. It's a guest bedroom that's located on the first floor. It's a lot of soft colors and this really bold statement rug. Now this bold statement rug could be swapped out for something that's a little bit more organic, a little bit more neutral, less pattern. But to me, the minute that you step into the room, this rug is kind of like where your eyes gravitate towards first. As you move through the space, you get to another bedroom and this bedroom is just like all black. I love a dark and moody space. I mean, I love to make this type of design statement. It's black walls, light furnishings. It's like a lot of soft, sumptuous texture set against this like moody black background. The clients are my dear friends. So it's great that I get to check in on them with their house and how they use it to entertain guests and family. They always tell me that no matter who comes into their house, whether or not it's children, it's older adults, it's teenagers, it's like grandparents, their favorite room in the home is that a black bedroom. I think it's just because it's a bold statement. It's not something that you would normally gravitate towards, especially if you're not a fan of design, especially if you've never ever slept in a black bedroom before. You're almost like, oh my gosh, a black bedroom. It could be really claustrophobic and it could feel really cavernous. If you really take the time to be thoughtful with your design, it doesn't have to be an entire room that you redo. It really could just be a corner of your home, maybe the corner that you use the most, a pocket that is personalized just for you. You can go really really bold, really crazy with your design. And then all of a sudden watch as that little cozy corner becomes your favorite spot in the entire home. 
Another really great way for you to go bold in design is with the use of wallpaper. I love wallpaper. I love being enveloped in a visual cocoon of color and pattern. It just brings me massive amounts of joy, especially when it's wall to wall. Think the bigger the room, the bolder you can go with your design. I also really love the impact of having wall-to-wall -wall wallpaper in a really tiny powder room. The powder room is smaller, there's less surface space to address, so you're purchasing less materials. I don't ever want you to think, okay, I'm gonna go bold in a room, that just means I'm gonna spend more money. We're trying to figure out clever ways, budget-friendly ways, renter-friendly ways for you to personalize your space and bring more joy into your home. Colorful rooms energize and inspire me. I always want you to key into the emotion that you're trying to elicit from that particular corner or that sector in your home. And that is the power of interior design. The next easy way for you to love your home even more this year is to repurpose your old furniture. I'm talking about the furniture that you already have in the home, okay? Not old furniture that you're thrifting, antiquing, or picking up from someone's house. I love to shop my home first. I'm not here to tell you that the key to making a happy home is to go out there and buy it. I don't, I don't believe in that at all. I don't subscribe to that. So first, what I want you to do is survey your home. I want you to go into every single room in the home and pull out pieces that you think just don't function as well as it should. It could be an end of bed bench that you no longer even sit on that's kind of just used as a catch for all of your dirty clothes. It could be a really tiny footstool that you had at your entry that's kind of just holding all your mail. Let the record show that you do not have to buy new furniture to love your home even more this year. I find that I love my home even more when it functions efficiently for every singular need. I like to shop my home first to figure out easy solutions for challenging conditions. When I redesigned my living room and I custom made my sectional for the adult side of my living room playroom combo, I knew that I kind of just wanted an open, expansive space. When your kids are young, they're toddlers, they're crawling around, they're rolling around, they're falling around everywhere. So I knew I just wanted soft surfaces on the floor and a really open space. But now that the girls are getting a little bit older, I see the benefit of having surface space that is usable and functional, which brings Brings me to my next point, I am in need of a coffee table. But instead of just going out and purchasing any old coffee table that can fit in this space, what I did instead was repurposed my end of bed storage bench to be my new storage ottoman slash coffee table instead. Ever since I swapped my old bed that didn't have a footboard for a new one that has a fully upholstered frame, the end of bed bench just didn't fit in the bedroom anymore. So of course it had to go. It migrated to the dining room room where I used it as a makeshift bench for extra seating, extra guests. You can kind of just move it wherever you need to. And then I thought, hey, you know, I need the coffee table. How about using that old ottoman as a filler coffee table so that I can kind of test out the color, the size, the parameters, even the shape. Do I like a rectangular coffee table in my living room? That is the power of repurposing old furniture. The ottoman has a storage compartment. It's really perfect for blankets and throw pillows. Now that I've had this ottoman in the living room for a couple of weeks, I actually love it. I am more confident in my design direction to invest in a coffee table that's going to stay there pretty permanently. I do the same for all of my client homes. At the initial walkthrough consultation, I go through their entire house, every single nook and cranny, and I'm kind of surveying. What pieces do you want to keep? What pieces do you want to donate or repurpose? A lot of the times I find really amazing heirloom pieces that the clients just didn't know what to do with. And I love creating these little pockets of joy every single time they see that piece again. Some long forgotten, some that wasn't even on their radar. Repurposing furniture is such a great way to switch things up and breathe new life into our home so it functions better and makes us ultimately happier. Sometimes that overlooked piece of furniture can serve a greater purpose elsewhere. Now go grab all of that filler furniture that you have scattered throughout the entire house and think of new ways that you can repurpose old favorites. The next easy way for you to love your home even more this year is to create a morning ritual. The mornings are such a crucial part of our day. And now that I have young children, it's even more important for me to get everyone off on the right foot. We wake up, I open up all the curtains to bring in fresh air and natural daylight. We say good morning to our garden and we thank our plants and trees for beautifying our courtyard. We get the kids dressed and I zip right into the kitchen to start our morning ritual. My husband makes me coffee. I make the kids breakfast. They play with their toys. Once the kids are settled with their breakfast, I get to enjoy my hot coffee while overlooking the garden. This entire morning ritual only takes 20 minutes, but it's my time to decompress before starting a busy workday. A huge part of my morning ritual 
ritual is my Breville coffee machine. I can't tell you how much this tiny little espresso machine brings me infinite amounts of joy on a daily basis. It's not even the coffee. I'm not even a coffee snob by any means. It's the entire ritual that I'm obsessed with. The smell of fresh ground beans wafting through the air. The sound of my little girl's giggles as they watch Bluey while eating their breakfast. The sight of my hot husband handing me that morning cup. I mean, it's all a vision. It's an entire morning ritual that brings me so much joy and I really relish in these mundane moments as much as the momentous ones. After the morning ritual, I go and I drop my kids off and then once the kids are dropped off, you know, it's like go, go, go. The day is non-stop. So I love creating these little morning rituals that not only help me stay present, but it gets my day started in the loveliest way. The next easy way for you to love your home even more this year is to repot your house plants. I made a previous video about bringing more joy into your home, how to spark joy into your home. And one of my best designer tips was to bring the outdoors in. This is all about cutting fresh flowers from your garden or adding in more indoor house plants or even an indoor tree. Well, I hope you took my advice from the last video because now your home is filled with these beautiful lush plants that are thriving. Now it's time to repot those house plants that you've invested in. Just like us, plants can can outgrow their surroundings. If you notice roots growing on the underside of your nursery pots or climbing on the top of the soil, it might be time to give them more breathing room. Here are the steps I take to repot my house plants. Take the plant out of its original planter and loosen the roots gently with your fingers. Then add a thick layer of potting soil to the new container. I like to use cocoa coir fibers since it drains well and has a ton of nutrients that my indoor plants love. Position the plant in the center. Fill the area around it with more soil and water all the way through, making sure the pot drains efficiently before setting in its new container. I actually like to do this outdoors. It's less messy, it's easier to clean up, and of course, you know, you're gonna get water everywhere. Once you're done with repotting the plants, you can find a new corner to house your plants in. Or if they're loving their original spot, that's all right. The new pots have just made this corner so much cuter than before. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy your brand new indoor jungalow complete with a collection of your favorite plants that bring you joy. The last item on today's list of the five easy ways to love your home even more this year is to pick a paint project. This is a design channel after all. It would be a travesty for me not to include a paint project with all of my designer tips. Paint, as you know it, is the simplest, cheapest, easiest, most effective way for you to visually transform the look of a room and bring more joy to your space. I'm not talking about a whole room refresh. Some of us rent, some of us work all day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just a small dollop of paint can make a huge difference in the most unlikeliest spaces. Just think, what if you refresh the inside of your front door? You don't even have to paint the whole thing. Our front doors take a beating, mine is all scratched up and scuffed up, and I'm looking to refinish the whole thing. If you're doing this yourself, make sure you sand and prime the door first. When it's time to pick your paint, make sure that semi-gloss or a soft sheen will be more durable and easier to clean than a flat or eggshell. If your case good is a veneer and it's not made from actual wood but a synthetic material instead, you definitely have to take the necessary precautions to prep it first or else the new paint won't adhere to the original surface. This includes cleaning, sanding, then priming before the final layer of paint can be applied. The paint project could even be a hand-me-down piece of furniture or an heirloom piece that you inherited. I remember scoring this cabinet on Craigslist for about $300. This is about 15 years ago, so $300 for this cabinet was actually a lot of money. But it's made so well, it's a solid piece of wood. It was originally white, and white was just not my thing. I needed color, I needed something really bold. So I had repainted this cabinet in like a hot fuchsia color, which I was absolutely obsessed with. Jewel tones were really hot that year, so hot pink was at like the top of my hit list. Now, after having lived with that pink color for years down the line when I was repurposing that dresser into my new entry console, I just needed a fresh new vibe. I didn't want to sand it, I didn't want to prime it, I didn't want to prep it. I just thought, what's the easiest way for me to transform this piece with very little effort? And I found Annie Sloan's chalk paint. I love chalk paint. Chalk paint is so, so easy to use. You don't have to prime it, you don't have to prep it. I mean, you, kind of, you can sand it a little bit, you can kind of clean off the dresser, but you literally can just apply this brand new chalk paint on the surface of the entire piece, and it makes it look so much more expensive. 
Chalk paint has this like very dense texture to it. So if you've used it before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many ways for you to work with this medium. You can distress the piece. You can just paint on like a really saturated coat, depending on how much coverage you like. It's not even necessary for you to buy an entire quart or gallon of paint for your paint project. Sample pots cost between five to $10 at your local hardware store. So you really could pick a paint project and complete it in a day's time and a whole lot less than the amount you paid for today's lunch. So remember that you don't need a huge budget to make a huge impact in your home. What makes you feel joy in your home? How do we create a space that we love more and more each day? Of course, the answer is different for everyone, but I feel like the conditions are all the same. Creating a space where you feel comfortable yet confident, relaxed yet invigorated, a place where you can enjoy a beautiful life and be surrounded by the ones you love. That to me is a recipe for the happiest homes. Remember that it is an art form and practice to design a space with thought and intent. The furniture you bring in, the pieces you style and decorate with can all contribute to the happiness you feel at home. And it doesn't ever require home ownership or a full remodel to do so. These small studied moves can turn your space into the ultimate sanctuary and bring more peace, joy, and harmony into your life. If you like this type of content and you want more videos that bring joy into your home, please give this video a like and a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know our all of my tips, which of these can you implement in your home right now? Share this video with anyone you know who loves interior design as much as we do and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the channel every single Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.